If you want to do a professional stream with multiple cameras on location, then watch this video. Hi, Gary Cruz with AmazeStudios.com here. And if you're wondering how to stream with multiple cameras on location and have professional results, then this is the video for you. Today I'll be covering all the equipment you need to basically start off with doing a nice on location stream with a couple pieces of equipment here. So first off, let's start off with the very basics. Uh, you can start off with just using an iPhone and lots of people can use that. You can stream directly to YouTube or Facebook. And then if you want to take it to the next level, we're using software called Ecamm Live. Now if you're not familiar with Ecamm Live, let me switch over to my desktop here so I can show you what it looks like. Ecamm Live is a streaming platform. Uh, it's software based and it's similar to OBS, which is for free. Ecamm is paid and you can start off with a subscription. Uh, it's Mac only and the biggest benefit for Ecamm Live is that uh, for me, it's really easy to use. And the next piece is that it really uh, brings up the engagement level to the next level because you can start to throw on comments from uh, your visitors from either YouTube or Facebook. But if you want to learn more about Ecamm Live, check out my other tutorials. Today I'm going to talk about the equipment you need to connect to Ecamm Live. So if I switch over to my software for Ecamm Live, I've got it loaded on my Mac here, right here called Ecamm Live. I have a iPhone here connected wirelessly to my Mac. For, so let's first start off with how we get everything connected. So the hardware that I'm using to connect both the laptop and my wireless devices, such as this iPhone, is this Verizon MiFi. So basically this is an access point that creates a wireless connection between all my devices. If we switch over to my Mac, and you look over here, I have it connected to my Verizon MiFi, and I have the same thing with my phone. With that, there is a software called Epoch Cam. What Epoch Cam does is turn your phone into a webcam. So if I scroll through here, this allows you to run software on your phone. So you have to get the app and then there's client software on your Mac that allows you to add a separate angle. So if we switch back over to Ecamm Live, you'll see that I have Epoch Cam as an available camera and then my USB camera, which is my main camera here. The Sony camera is my main camera and then the wide camera is Epoch Cam. So if I wanted to change the scene for a separate camera, these are my camera sources. So I can uh, add multiple cameras on here by just clicking on the plus sign. Um, that's picture in picture mode. So if I turn off picture in picture mode, it does a split screen. So since I have this scene assigned to Sony, I'll just keep that as my main camera here. All right, so I have both your Mac and your iPhone connected to the MiFi. Once that's connected to the MiFi, you then have to double check to see if you have a strong connection. So if we switch over to the browser, I like to go to speed test to check the upload speed because that's important on determining what type of resolution you'll get for streaming to those multiple platforms. So using speed test, you can determine your download and upload speed and the upload speed is what's important in determining the quality for your streams. So ideally you want to have about 10 megabits per second um, over here is about four. So 10 megabits per second will get you a pretty good 1080p screen, stream. And anything below that, you might have to do 720 and also reduce their frame rate. Those settings are done on Ecamm Live Preferences. So if we go to the Preferences on Ecamm Live and take a look at the Stream Preferences, here are the options for streaming. Right now, I've got this recording, so I can't change these settings, but I currently have it at recording 1080p on high. So the next option is powering your devices. If we take a look at the main camera, I have a Jackery battery pack and I'll put the model in the description. Let's go ahead and power that on. I'm currently drawing, let's see, right now it says zero watts, but I just turned it on and I'm at 86% and I'm currently drawing 70 watts. So depending on your wattage, 
output. Now it's going up to 90 because the fan just kicked on on the Mac. And it's at 93 watts. So if you have 300 watt hours, that's going to run you for three hours. You just divide the wattage that you're using by the total output of the battery. Uh, the next thing I have is this portable it has three USB charging docks and then it has two power outlets because the Jackery only has one. And if you're lucky enough to connect to the Ethernet on location, bring your own router so that you can provide your own Wi-Fi and then test the connection there. I've been in some places where the Ethernet connection is slower than the MiFi, so I ended up using the MiFi. So for long duration videos, I would recommend a Sony camera or a camcorder. And right now I'm using the Right now I'm using a wireless microphone by Sennheiser. It's a, one, it's a G3 series. It's pretty good for the audio. This is what you want to use to get clear audio from the speakers. Now, if you have multiple speakers, one of the things you, you might want to connect to a mixer and then you'll have to put uh, a connection that would replace the lavalier mic with a connection that would come from the output of that mixer. Maybe it's a quarter inch to one fourth you'll just use that adapter to get the audio from there. The thing that you have to be careful of is sometimes the audio might come in pretty hot. I'll show you an example photo. Also, what you wanna do is make sure you have some good headphones to monitor audio while you're on site. So I've got these uh, Audio-Technica MKH50. These are really good because not only can you isolate the sound by covering your ears, but you know if you needed to also hear the ambient sound, you can just move one of the um, cups behind. So with long form video, you, it's probably best to use a camcorder. I know the, the trend for cinematic looking videos are with DSLRs. I have a, both Sony and Canon DSLRs, but I found that using camcorders is better. And the main reason is, let me just switch over to the wide view here. All right, so this is video coming from my iPhone. And the primary reason is using this Lank zoom control. So if we switch over to the view that has the Lank, I can use, uh, well, let's do this. Let's do a split screen here. So as I zoom in and out, I can control not only the pan and tilt, but also the zoom while just controlling it from this handle. So that makes it really convenient to have professional looking pan shots and zoom shots. Uh, so that's one of the, my, the main benefits of using a camcorder like this Sony PXW-Z90. But also the other benefit is that it doesn't have, I mean, I know that the newer DSLRs and mirrorless cameras provide unlimited recording, but this PXW-Z90 has two camcorder slots, so you can either mirror it or do sequential. And then basically these batteries last forever. I've never run out of batteries for a full two hours or plus with that. And if I have to, I can switch these out. I got plenty of these in my bag. Okay, so the next thing here is let me talk about Epoch Cam as a wide shot or a wide angle camera. So let me put this back over here and talk a little bit about the iPhone as a separate camera. So if we switch back over to the camera view. On Epoch Cam, I can switch from 1x, a super wide angle, a 1x view, and then the 2x view. This is coming in from the iPhone 10, And it's, it's a pretty good camera. So I'll overlay some real life footage that I used uh, recently on location. And so you can see an example, and it mixes pretty well with these Sony cameras. And if you want to extend the battery life on this, especially if you're using this for long form, you have to use a battery. So right here, I have a anchor battery connected to this. I just have it strapped onto the tripod here. And then I have that connected to the phone and I've gone about five hours at least with streaming with no problem. All right, um, so I've got three different tripods here. The one that's holding the iPhone is this Gitzo GT1555T. This is a traveler. And I've got a ball head here that has a leveler that'll show the level. On the Sony, this is a 
tripod that I had for a long time, but the biggest benefit of this is that it supports Link, which is the remote cable that plugs in there. On my laptop, this is pretty handy for using your laptop on location and then using a tripod to hold that together. So I'll put a link there. I think this is by Newer and it has a strap, secure strap here. And you'll see that it's pretty, it's, it's pretty solid. Before I was just putting my laptop on top of that Pelican case and it wasn't very stable. And all this equipment fits in that Pelican case, that camera bag, and the laptop bag for the laptop. Now you're probably wondering why I didn't review or go over this A10 Mini Pro. This can also be used on location. In fact, I've used this on location for a Zoom meeting to connect these two cameras. And then I use this as an input switcher to feed into Zoom because it shows up as a webcam. But the biggest benefit of <clears throat> Ecamm Live is that it is all encompassing software where you can add titles. So for example, if I needed to do a countdown in a video, I can go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and locate that file, which is... So here's an example of doing multimedia. This is very hard to do with the A10 Mini Pro. The other benefit of Ecamm Live is I can add titles. So here's an example. I can put a title here and then add that. I can put it anywhere in the screen here and adjust it accordingly and change the colors and fonts all through this interface. So for example, if I wanted to change this color to um, a nice purple and click on OK, then I've got this. And then if I needed to turn it on and off, I'll do this. So that's a quick overview of Ecamm Live. But the big thing here is being able to power this. So if we take a look at we can see that my battery is being charged, my laptop battery is being charged by the Jackery, and that should last me about four hours on top of the battery that lasts for this. I made this mistake before of not having a battery generator, and Ecamm Live uses a lot of power, especially on an Intel powered Mac, and my battery lasted maybe about 30 to 35 minutes. Luckily, there was an extension cord I was able to plug in. But if you're on a remote site with no extension cords, then a battery generator is the way to go. All right, so I covered camera one. I covered camera two, which is an iPhone. I actually have two of these. I'm just using one right now to film myself. And the benefit of having two matching cameras is that when you switch between the two cameras, number one, you have a matching look with color. You don't have to do a lot of color grading or color balancing in software. And then if you're just using one video camera here, you can even use two iPhones if you wanted. You can have one plugged directly into your Mac and they'll show up as a video source and this one wirelessly. And the big benefit of these is that they're portable. iPhones are readily available to use with Epoch Cam and Ecamm Live. And I really like the fact that the latency is very quick on this. So if we switch over to the wide view here, I never had any problems with latency. You just have to be really close. So this is, not do this is doing pretty good considering the fact that this is being streamed over wirelessly on this MiFi, Verizon MiFi. I'll go over one of the real life examples that I have here. So if we switch over to my desktop, I have a live stream that I've recorded. So this was a stream in both locations at the church and at the funeral. This was a, a funeral for a friend who passed away. So if I play this, audio here so I can talk about it uh, so I accidentally had the camera turned on me this is a countdown so as it's countdown I, as it counts down I have a video playing on a loop and then I switched it over to the main camera and you can see that uh, as comments came in I was able to pull them into the live stream and then you can see me switching between the camera camera angles so this is the wide view coming from the iPhone and this is all streaming in real time. And then when this countdown is over, I timed it so that it actually goes, coincides with the starting of the um, celebration here. It does look like a time lapse because I'm quickly scrubbing through this. Um, the, so this is an example of doing this on site. This was on location at the uh, burial site. All right. So I found that using technology is a really great way to share experiences with people that can't be on site. 
especially when you have to live stream. And if you wanted to step it up from just using an iPhone and bring up the production level, you can do so with a lot of the equipment that's available now from laptops to video cameras to iPhone and even streaming software that allows you to basically put a professional production together. If this video was helpful for you, please hit that like button so that you can be notified for any other videos of interest, especially around live streaming. And if you're interested in live streaming technology, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting that notification on the way out. Thanks for watching.